watch in that cabin for over an hour and now I ain't seen nothing except them two women. Besides, I already told you, Boone was still in Salem when I left. It stands to reason he couldn't be home by now. Well, I suppose we have to take the chance. We can't travel very far without supplies. Take your friends, get what you can. And make sure that the family is properly recompensed. alarming about that. Well, it's the way they look. Oh, darling, I'm sure there's nothing to be frightened about. Morning, ma'am. Good morning. Lovely morning. What do you want? Well, we were just traveling through and we ran out of grub. Thought maybe we could get a few supplies. Well, I suggest you try the Ford. It's right down the road. They have a store there. Well, there's certain reasons we can't do that, ma'am. So I guess we just now have just to get a him minute. here. Get out there in the kitchen, see what grub you can rustle up. Look around, see if there's anything we can sell. any trouble. Besides, Coot don't like to be fussed with. You just wait until my pa gets back. You'll be sorry. By the time your pa gets back, we'll be long gone. Cover the 
canoe with brush. Israel, have you ever been this far up river? No. Nope. Last time Pa came up here, he said I was too little. He promised I could come the next time, though. Well, then he kept his promise by giving you permission to make the trip with me. I was afraid Ma wasn't going to let me come. I'm sure glad Pa finally talked her into it. Well, so am I. It would have been a mighty lonely trip without you. How long are we going to be here? Well, our cache of furs is about five miles inland from here. I imagine it will take us about two days to bring them out. Even with me helping? Even with you helping. Why? Are you beginning to get homesick already? Criminently, no. I was just hoping it'd take a little longer. I like being out here in the woods with you, Mingo. Well, then, with good hunting, and if we walk slowly enough, I think we might add another day. I walk just about as slow as anybody. Ma says, even slower when I got some chores to do. So I've noticed from time to time. Well, we'd better get this canoe covered up if we're going to reach our campsite for tonight. Israel, I'm, I'm afraid you're setting too fast a pace for me, lad. I'm sorry, Mingo. I didn't realize I was going so fast. But then I guess you get tired easy when you get old. Yes, I'm afraid that's true. Got much further to go? Oh, not more than half a mile. Well, seeing that you're so tired, maybe it'd help if I carried your rifle or oh. something. No, thank you, son. I, uh... I think with a moment's rest, I'll manage. I guess a man's got to travel a lot to know how big this country is. That's true. It's much larger than most people realize. Sud getting pretty low. If you're rested up, we best be getting on so we can make camp before dark. Well, I uh, believe I can manage now. Come on. It sure does feel real good to get home again. What have you got against Salem? Nothing. Just got something against the time it takes to get there and get back. Wonder what Cincinnati has once done with these supplies. Well, that's his problem now. Are you thirsty? I'm right behind you. What's the matter? Dale. Sure, I'm glad you got back. I was about to send a messenger out for you. Why? Well, I'll let Becky tell you. She's the one it happened to. Becky! Dan. Oh, Dan. Dan, I'm so glad you're home. What happened there? What was those four men? It was the most terrifying experience. Now, hold on just a minute. Just sit down here, Becky, and tell me all about it. Well, it was yesterday afternoon. These men came to the door asking for food. When we refused, they forced their way in. They wrecked our cabinet. Stole everything we own. Well, everything they thought had any value. Did they harm you, Becky? No, not really. Pardon? No. But they were so dreadful. After they left, I brought Mommy here to the fort for fear they'd come back. What'd they look like? Oh, one was the most vicious-looking man I've ever seen. And he had an Indian necklace. He seemed to be their leader. What about the others? They were all about alike. All filthy. Did you hear anybody call by name? Let me think. Um... Yes. Yes, I think the leader called one of them Coot. You think you might know him, Daniel? I know him. That's Rafe Todd and his bunch of renegade scalp hunters. What are they doing ranging this far south? That's what I'd like to know. Becky, which way did they head when they left the cabin? Up river. Cincinnati's put me up some food. Mama, I want you and Becky to stay here until I get back. No, Dan. Those men are desperate. And what they took isn't worth the risk of going after. That's not why I'm going, Becky. 
What worries me is that Israel and Mingo are camped someplace upriver. Now, Cincinnati, what about that food? Well, you're coming right away, Daniel. Better make that food enough for two. No reason for you to go along. No reason why I shouldn't, either. Set that was covered with grass. I guess your father and I were not the only ones who trapped through here after all. You just lie still. I can do quicker than anything. No, I'm afraid not, Israel. You, you can't spring this sort of trap without a set of clamps. That's one thing we didn't bring with us. What are you going to do? Israel, did you notice the spring we passed back there? Be a good boy, Israel. Get me some water. And see if you can find some moss. Sure you'll be all right when I get back? I'll be all right. Be a good boy. Do as I tell you. You managed to get lost. It took me quite a while to find the moss. <sighs> Lean pretty bad. Hurt much? It hurts. But I think I'll live through it. As soon as I get a fire going, I'll heat the water. It's washed off good. I reckon it'll feel better. Ma and Pa taught me that whenever I got hurt. I'll just put a little powder on, and it'll fly up quicker. <laughs> and if you'll give me your flint and steel. <laughs> I'm lucky to have brought you with me, Israel. Running out of daylight mighty fast. We will have to travel in the dark. Todd hates me too much not to take it out on Israel and Mingo. Won't be very long now. Then we can get that light cleaned and bandaged. Maybe it'll feel better. Israel, come here. I want to talk to you. Now listen carefully. Do you think you can get that canoe into the water all by yourself? I don't know. Why? I just don't think you'll be able to get back to Boonesboro over land. You mean you want me to go home and leave you here? It's our only chance. I just can't do it, Mingo. Not just up and go with you here all alone and hurt. You have to go, Israel. It's the only way. No, it ain't. Pa knows where we are. If we don't get home, he'll come on looking for us. Then we better start to tend that way. Israel, you've had a long day. Don't you think it's time you got some rest? Well, I got him and I'm a little tired. Then why don't you bed down for the night? But you know. I'll be all right. My leg feels much better since you cleaned and bandaged it. I'll keep watch for a while. Well, I guess I could use a little sleep, but I ain't gonna do it unless you promise me to wake me up so I can put some more wood on the fire. I promise, I promise. Well, in that case. <laughs> Good night, Mingo. Good night, Israel. Israel? Yes? I'm proud of you.
Perfect. Find something, Daniel? I made short camp here last night. At least long enough to eat. Ashes are cold. Stones are still warm. I figure we're no more than eight to ten hours behind them. Then we're gaining on them. Israel. It has a lighter charge, so the recoil won't be as violent. You mean I can't take your powder horn and chop pouch so I can reload in case I miss? That's exactly what I mean. You have one shot only. Now, we need fresh meat, and any kind will do. But if you miss, you come directly back to camp. You don't trust me very much, do you? Why, Israel, I trust you implicitly, or I wouldn't allow you to go at all. But I can't trust you to reload that rifle. There's no need to worry. I guarantee there'll be fresh meat in the pot come sundown. Good hunting, Israel. I fail to understand why we've been in such a confounded hurry. You think we've had the entire colonial militia at our heels? It ain't the militia I'm worried about. I figure Boone might be on our trail. Why should Boone follow us? You did pay for that food and those trinkets, didn't you? I've been meaning to tell you about that, Morgan. You mean some of you deliberately looted that house? Oh, I wouldn't exactly say that. You see, this woman was downright unreasonable. She held a gun on me. She said if I... Wanted supplies, I'd better go to the fort and buy them. But considering I couldn't do that, we just went in and took them. Including the jewelry that your outlaw friends are wearing. Oh, I tried to stop them. I'd done my utmost, but uh, you know how it is. A fella sees some fancy doodads he figures he can trade. Uh, just naturally gonna take them. I did all I could to stop them. You fool. But you go calling me no names now. After all, I know the way to Fort Detroit, and you don't. I start taking a dislike to you. All I gotta do is walk away. Did you harm those women? Well, you know I wouldn't do that, Morgan. I'm not sure there's anything you wouldn't do. <laughs> well, what's done is done, can't be helped. Come on, we best be moving on. Fine marksmanship. I just did what Pa told me to do. Let my breath out, make sure I got a good beat on the target, then squeeze the trigger instead of jerking it. Yes, yes, then what happened? It knocked me flat on my back. <laughs> well, the important thing is you made the shot good. I'll get that bird started cooking. 
Let me really change the bandage on that leg. to Dan. country once till the Shawnee run me out. That's a bear set I made three, four years ago. Look what I catched. I done catch me an engine. I see nothing amusing about an unfortunate accident. It's a good thing we stopped by. We'll have you out of this trap in a moment. Gee, mister, I'm sure glad you came. I need help real bad. He's right. Give me a hand here, Todd. What's the hurry? I'm hungry. I couldn't spring that trap all by myself. And it looked like all we could do is wait until my pa... Israel. Gee, Mingo, all I was doing is asking him for help. Who are you, and what are you doing here? Uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name's Roger Morgan. My name's Israel. His name is... Never mind, Israel. Your friend's quite right, son. In this country, it's wise to be suspicious of strangers. It's not you I object to, Mr. Morgan. It's the friend you brought with you. That's why I call it downright unfriendly attitude. Here we are just trying to be neighborly, and you go getting hostile. And you can lay that gun aside, too. I ain't gonna give you a chance to use it, no how. You've never given anyone a chance, Todd. You know my name. Now, why would... I'll be dogged your bones, engine. I'm the one who helped him drive you out of Kentucky, if that's what you mean. You're a friend of Daniel Boone's? I like to think so. Oh, they're thicker than thieves. Well, that's apt to pose us quite a problem. What do you get my mom's logging? Natural ring, too! You say that's your ma's jewelry, boy? And you must be Boone's little boy. Ain't this a nice family gathering? What have you done with Mrs. Boone? I'm sure no harm's come to the lady. You give me back my mom's things. Hold on there, boy. Those doodads are all bought and paid for, legal like. You're a liar, Todd. You've never bought or paid for anything in your life. You shut your mouth, Indian. I already owe you something. I ain't yet made up my mind how to pay you. Well, we've, we've traveled long and fast today without taking time to cook a proper meal. I'm sure you won't mind if we share in your repast. Be our guests. Eat! <laughs> Still in Shawnee territory. You three better go out and stand guard. You figured on spending the night here? I ain't decided yet. You asked me, we better keep traveling. Nobody asked you. Now get out there and do what I said. You know, I was real nice of you to offer to share your supper with us. Sound Christian principle, Todd. Never turn a hungry man from your door. But then, of course, that would be impossible for you to understand. <laughs> I, for one, am extremely grateful for the food. I regret that my companions have left so little of it for you. Thank you very much. Aren't you going to help us? Mingo's hurting awful bad. 
Well, I'm sorry, but the circumstances being what they are, I'm afraid that's quite impossible. What circumstances? I think I can explain, Israel. You know, you're quite perceptive and well-spoken. For an Indian? My father was English. I spent some time at Oxford. Really? Well, that makes us fellow alumni, then. I attended Oxford for two years before... But, uh, you were about to explain my circumstances, weren't you? It's really quite simple. My guess would be that you've just come from 96, the Loyalist stronghold on the Saluda River, and that you're carrying vital information, topographical details, armaments, fortifications, estimated strength of military personnel. How'd you deduce all that? Your wrist betrayed you, sir. It bears the insignia of the Royal Lancers, a marking on the skin that can never be erased. You're quite right, of course. And knowing that, you understand why I can't set you free. Yeah, I figure it's time we pulled out, Morgan. The boon is chasing us. He ain't gonna stop because it's night. He'll just keep coming. Yeah, I suppose you're right, Todd. What are you gonna do with them two? I haven't made up my mind yet. <laughs> well, ain't no need for you to worry. You just leave that there engine to me. I guarantee he won't do any talking. I take it you propose killing him? Well, that's as good a way of keeping him from talking I know of. What would you accomplish by that? He's helpless. No threat to us. Well, you got any better thought? We leave the in... We leave him here. But if Boone should happen to catch up with us, the boy could be of value as a hostage. Sometimes you do get a good idea, Morgan. You understand why I have to do this, don't you? Not real good. But I ain't afraid to go with you, because if my pa is trailing you, you're all going to be real sorry. You talk too much, boy. Mr. Morgan, I've known this Todd for some time. He's a renegade, a scalp hunter, and the others are no better. I told you to shut your mouth before, Indian. That'll do, Todd. I don't condone cold-blooded murder. I apologize for my companions. I needed a guide and an escort. These men had those qualifications, and I, I just didn't have any time to look any further. Well, then let me give you some advice, Mr. Morgan. Be careful when you turn your back on them. You might never complete your mission. And why are you giving me this warning? Because I want to ask a favor of you. I have a canoe hidden near the river. Israel knows where it is. Put him in it and send him downstream. At least give the boy some kind of a chance. Don't let him sweet talk you, Morgan. That boy is our insurance for a safe trip to where we want to go. Coat! I'm afraid you're right. When we take the boy to Fort Detroit, he'll be released there and arrangements made for his safe return. That's the way I like to hear a man talk, Morgan. Take the boy. Tell the others we're pulling out. Apparently, your military training no longer means anything to you. I feel sorry for you. Mistaken, sir. I was trained as an officer. And that entails both the giving of orders and the obedience of orders. And much as I regret the degradation of this assignment, it has been given to me and I will obey it to the letter. I'm truly sorry. I'll be along. I, uh, 
I suppose you've stayed behind to kill me. Yeah, I considered it. As soon as Morgan gets down the trail of it, I changed my mind. Out of mercy and kindness, I'm sure. Oh, I wouldn't exactly say that. suggesting you do it for yourself. How do you figure? Because if you don't kill me, Todd, I make you a promise. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Space, Todd. But your idea to bring him, Morgan, I reckon it's up to you to see he doesn't slow us down. We gotta be traveling and traveling fast. You ask me, we never should have brung him, just tied him up and throwed him in the river. Nobody asked you. Now you listen to me, boy. I know what you're up to. You're figuring on slowing us down, giving your pa a chance to catch up. Well, I don't like that. And they don't like it either. You slow us down just once more. I'll turn you over to them. They'll make you wish you'd stayed on your feet. Don't you threaten the boy, Todd. I'll do more than threaten him. You'll not lay a hand on him, nor will any of your men. Now, I gave my word that no harm would come to this boy, and I intend to keep it. You tell your friends that, and make sure they understand. Now, look here, Morgan. There's something you better understand. This ain't no parade ground, and them boys ain't soldiers. They ain't used to taking orders, so don't start giving it. Don't you threaten me, Todd. I'm not threatening you. I'm telling you the truth. Now, you make sure that boy keeps up. I'm sorry, son. That's all right, Miss Morgan. You've done all you could. Now, look, we'll make camp in an hour or so. 
You do your best to keep pace, and I'll help you all I can. But I know what you're thinking. But it's a false hope, boy. Now you put it aside. You don't know my pa. He'll come after me. You wait and see. Well, come on, before they come back looking for us. Israel's with him. What do you make of that? Mingo's hurt. That explains the other tracks I found, like somebody dragging something. He is. He's dragging a trap. Come on. too long. When we get it open, pull your leg free. When I count to three. Start counting. One, two, three. You take care of Mingo. I'm going after him. Right. Well, that puts me two up. Quit you one. They got to keep up that bickering all night. Does it bother you, Morgan? Yes, it bothers me a great deal. Tell them to stop. Say, now, I keep repeating and repeating, and you don't hear me. They used to take an order. You have some authority over them. Come on. I've seen you use it. Well, sometimes I tell them. Sometimes <laughs> they tell me. I reckon this is one of the times they do the telling. Come on. I don't understand you. Let me cut. See, they're playing high card. First one gets five ahead is the winner. Seven. Three. <laughs> and looks like Coot just won. What stakes are they gambling for? Well, I wasn't going to tell you that, Morgan, because I got an idea you wouldn't like that. What do you mean? Well, seems the boys are tired of being slowed down by this here kid. So they're gambling for him. Gambling for the boy. Maybe I should have said for his scalp. His scalp? Worth $50 in Fort Detroit. This boy is in my custody. Looks like Coot just won him. I intend to see to it that he's delivered safely to Fort Detroit. Well, I won him fair and square. You can ask Luke. No one is going to touch this boy. I'm taking the boy, Todd. I may not know the way to Fort Detroit, but I know the way we came. And don't you try to follow us. 
Oh, I ain't gonna try to follow you, Morgan. I got an idea you ain't going no place. <laughs> Looks like you've got two scalps instead of one. He gave you quite a clout. I reckon you'll have a headache for a day or two. Oh, I told you he'd come. I knew he would. Out there in the bushes. Spread out in those trees. That's Boone out there. That ain't gonna do you any good. Let me see about that, son. You just wait your spell. Shouldn't take too long. Your paw's real good in the dark, but ain't one bit better than Cooter Lucas. you've been carrying. Pretty smart, ain't you, boy? Smart enough to know a Kentucky rifle when I hear one. Sounds pretty much like any other man. At least I got you. Not anymore, you ain't. Now just put that rifle down. Oh, boy. Suppose that ain't your pa after all. It's my pa, all right. Now put it down. That's the way you want it, boy. Satisfied? Now give me that pistol, boy, before you hurt yourself. Stay away from me. Boy, you don't want to shoot me. I'm telling you, stay away. You're a little young to start killing people. You may not want to, but I'm sure going to if you don't stop. <laughs> Someplace watching. Boom! I'm running out of patience. Okay, have it your way then. You see this knife? I'm gonna count to three. One, two. I ain't going much higher. All right, Todd, you win.
That's what I call being real sensible. Let the boy go. Not till you throw that gun away and fire. Boy, you're gonna get killed. Do what he says, this one. I've been looking forward to this for a long time, Boone. It's gonna be a real pleasure. Engine tells me something. I'm gonna believe him. I don't know how you got here. I'm sure glad you did. Tupper? Israel? Let's go home. big as this ain't got that much imagination. <laughs> I always thought engines were supposed to be good in the woods. I reckon I'm gonna have to change my mind now. Keep it up. Keep it up, Cincinnati. <laughs> I'm gonna set a trap for you someday. Mighty hunter. Mighty woodsman. Mighty trapper. <laughs> <laughs> well, I reckon that was his trouble. He trapped everything else in the woods. There's nothing left to trap. So he had to set a trap for himself. <laughs> As for you, Daniel, don't you worry. There's plenty of traps for everybody. Uh, yeah, you reckon you can get as far as the cabin on that leg? Well, I, I'm willing to try. Well, you better get up on your feet because Becky's got supper ready. Oh, I think I can make it. Go to it, Bingo! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 